Last night, the USFL held their supplemental draft. Going into the draft, there were some rumors flying around that some big-name quarterbacks could be taken. While we unfortunately did not see any of those rumors come to fruition, we did see some notable names taken. But before I get into that, if you enjoy USFL and college football content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Now, it's time to sit back, relax, and get into this video. Sage Surratt is one of the more well-known wide receivers taken in the USFL supplemental draft, but is going to be classified as a tight end. Surratt is from Lincolnton, North Carolina, where he would go on to become an athletic superstar at Lincolnton High School. As a senior, he set a state record with 129 receptions for 2,104 yards and 28 touchdowns while also having two interceptions returned for a touchdown. He finished his football career setting a state record with 366 receptions for 5,926 yards and 80 touchdowns. He was also a star basketball player, averaging 35.7 points per game, 11.8 rebounds per game, and 5.5 assists per game as a senior. He was named a three-time Max Prep All-American for both football and basketball as well. Coming out of high school, Surratt was a three-star recruit who chose to attend Wake Forest over North Carolina. He redshirted his freshman year, but impressed during the spring game, finishing with six receptions for 106 yards. He would go on to become the Demon Deacons' second leading receiver in 2018, finishing with 41 receptions for 581 yards and four touchdowns, playing in all 13 games and starting nine of them. During his first career start, he would have 150 receiving yards against Tulane and would impress throughout the season. During the 2019 season, Surratt would become the first Power 5 player to accumulate 1,000 yards receiving, finishing the year with 66 receptions for 1,001 yards and 6 touchdowns, but suffered a season-ending shoulder injury against Virginia Tech in early November. He was named a finalist for the Bilitnikoff Award and was named First Team All-ACC. He debated about entering the 2020 NFL Draft, and looking back at it, he probably should have, but instead chose to return to Wake Forest. Going into the 2020 season, he was viewed as one of the top 25 prospects for the 2021 draft, who chose to return by Pro Football Focus and was a preseason third team All American, according to Phil Steele. Due to the ongoing events of 2020, Surratt decided to opt out of the 2020 season and chose to focus on the 2021 NFL draft. He crushed his draft stock after running a 4.740 and went undrafted, choosing to sign with the Detroit Lions. He was viewed as a player who could legitimately make the final 53 man roster and was viewed as a wide receiver who could make contested catches, which goes back to his basketball skill set. Detroit also had a depleted wide receiver room, watching Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones Jr. leave during the offseason. The network's Joe Mariano wrote back in 2021, Surratt is a physical receiver with terrific ball skills. He excels at winning in contested situations by creating leverage, positioning his frame, and then allowing his size and ball skills to take over. The concern with Surratt is a modest athletic profile, where separation, quickness, and long speed are missing, which limits his ceiling at the next level. For a team in search of a big body target that could win down the field, Surratt is an ideal target, but there are some limitations in what he can and cannot do on the field. He would be waived by the Lions at the end of August and signed to the practice squad but was released a few weeks later. He now will look to reinvigorate his career in the USFL for the Birmingham Stallions. Cameron Scarlett is from Portland, Oregon and attended Central Catholic High School. While at Central Catholic, Scarlett lettered in football, track and field, basketball, and swimming. He led his high school to a pair of state and league titles, but missed most of his senior year with an injury, finishing with 832 yards and 14 touchdowns in 8 games. Cameron finished his high school career with 4,831 all-purpose yards and 54 career touchdowns, being named an All-State player twice. Coming out of high school, Scarlett was a four-star recruit, choosing Stanford over Notre Dame and Washington. He would redshirt during the 2015 season and played in 11 games during the 2016 season, rushing for 117 yards and one touchdown on 38 carries. During the 2017 season, Cameron rushed for 399 yards and 8 touchdowns on 91 carries but really broke out as a star on special teams, finishing with 1,008 kick return yards, which was second best nationally. He finished the year averaging 112.2 all-purpose yards per game. He finished the following year with 1,005 all-purpose yards and 8 touchdowns while finally breaking out his senior year when he finished with 201 carries for 840 yards and 7 touchdowns during his last year at Stanford. He earned the Team MVP award and would enter the 2020 NFL Draft. He went undrafted and signed with the Tennessee Titans before being waived before the start of the season. He then signed with the Seattle Seahawks, joining a crowded backfield that consisted of Chris Carson, Rashad Penny, Travis Homer, DJ Dallas, Josh Johnson, and Alex Collins. Scarlett was drafted by the Michigan Panthers last night during the fifth round of the USFL Supplemental Draft and could be a dangerous return man this spring. Gabriel Sewell Jr. 
is the brother of 2021 Lions first round pick Penny Sewell and Oregon's Noah Sewell. Gabriel is originally from Malaiimi, American Samoa, and attended high school at Desert Hills. While at Desert Hills, Gabriel was a three-year letter winner, playing on both sides of the ball and leading his high school to the 3AA state championship in 2013. He racked up 182 tackles, eight and a half sacks, five forced fumbles, three interceptions, and five touchdowns in three years, and was a three-star recruit coming out of high school. He would choose to attend Nevada over Colorado because he felt the program was on the rise. Gabriel redshirted his freshman year and was named the Nevada Scout Team Player of the Year. During the 2016 season, he finished third on the team with 78 tackles and 5.5 and tackles for a loss. During the 2018 season, Gabriel led the team with 92 tackles, 7.5 tackles for loss, including three sacks and led the team to an Arizona Bowl win. As a senior, Gabriel got to play against his brother Penne, who was at Oregon finishing the game with five tackles. He finished his senior year with 54 tackles, 5.5 tackles for loss, two pass deflections, and one forced fumble. Gabriel entered the 2020 NFL Draft, but due to the ongoing pandemic, his pro day was canceled. Sewell wasn't a highly touted prospect at the time, but a pro day could have given scouts an additional look at him and may have tipped the scales to him being drafted, or at the very least, a camp invite and practice squad roster spot. He went undrafted, but during the 2021 draft cycle, he was not only able to compete in Nevada's pro day, but was invited by Mario Cristobal to participate in Oregon's pro day as well, participating alongside his brother. He went undrafted during the 2021 NFL Draft and received a tryout with the Denver Broncos. He now turns his attention to the USFL, where he will be playing with the Philadelphia Stars. Jordan Chun is another running back that has the potential to do great things in the USFL and will be joining Sage Surratt on the Birmingham Stallions. Chun is originally from Gurley, Alabama and attended Madison County High School, where he'd go on to become a two-way player. As a senior, he rushed for 2,229 yards and 43 touchdowns on offense while also racking up 155 tackles, 7 sacks, and 4 interceptions as a defensive back on defense. He led Madison County to the number 3 ranking in the state and a school record 12 wins as well as their first appearance in the state semifinals. The Offensive Player of the Year, according to the Huntsville Time, was a two-star recruit coming out of high school and chose to attend Troy. He would receive immediate playing time as a freshman, rushing for 514 yards and 14 touchdowns on 128 carries, setting a Troy freshman record. He once again played a reserve role as a sophomore, rushing for 509 yards and 6 touchdowns on 111 carries, with his best game coming against Idaho when he finished with 189 yards. His junior season would be derailed when he shattered his collarbone in the second game of the season. When he returned to the field, he had his best season rushing for 1,288 yards and 16 touchdowns on 279 carries and followed that up rushing for 774 yards and 10 touchdowns in 2017, although he missed two games with a knee injury. Sean went undrafted during the 2018 NFL Draft and would sign with the Dallas Cowboys where he jumped back and forth between their practice squad and active roster before being waived in July of 2020. He then signed a future reserve contract with the New York Giants in January of 2021 but was later waived. Ahmad Dixon is the last big name player I want to talk about. Dixon is originally from Waco, Texas and attended Waco Midway High School where he'd go on to become one of the best high school players in the nation. During his high school career, he racked up over 300 tackles and was named to the All-Decade Team. Coming out of high school, the Army All-American was a four-star recruit and chose to attend Baylor during the 2010 recruiting cycle. He mainly played on special teams as a freshman but took over a starting role as a sophomore finishing with 89 tackles, 3 pass breakups and 1 interception. His best season came during his junior year when he finished with 102 tackles, 3 pass breakups, 2 interceptions and 1 sack in 13 games. He would be named to the second team All Big 12 team and second team All American his senior year when he finished with 81 tackles, 6 pass breakups and 1 interception. Dixon entered the 2014 NFL Draft where he was taken 248th overall by the Dallas Cowboys in the 7th round. He impressed during the Cowboys preseason game against the San Diego Chargers, racking up 12 tackles, but was late to walkthroughs before the Ravens game and was suspended. He initially made the roster, but after showing up late to a team meeting, he would be waived by the Cowboys. He has since been a journeyman player, spending time with the Vikings twice, Bears, Dolphins, Edmonton Eskimos of the Canadian Football League twice, the Spring League, and the Los Angeles Wildcats of the XFL. He played in five games with the Wildcats, racking up 55 tackles before the season was canceled due to the events of 2020. He most recently spent time with the Massachusetts Pirates of the Indoor Football League during 2021. This may be the 30-year-old's last chance of making it back to the NFL, and he could be a key player for the Philadelphia Stars. But who are you most excited to see play in the USFL this spring? Let me know in the comments section below.
you enjoyed this video make sure to check out my video on the three running backs i am most excited to watch this spring in the usfl right here don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more usfl content as well thank you so much for watching and as always remember to embrace the grind